This is a quick flying guide for beginners. I've opted to do it in the MISC Freelancer because regardless of what game package you purchased, you probably have a Freelancer. It's given to all players presently to fix some bug in the game. Which bug, don't worry about now. Just behold the fact that you get this ship for free right now. So, to open and close doors, if you don't know, you push and hold F, and then you click. It's called the inner thought system. The idea being that when you push and hold F on anything, you get to see the, the text of your inner thoughts laid out. <laughs> the Freelancer is probably a much superior ship to the one that you got in your game package, although it drives like a school bus. When you enter the pilot seat on any ship, if you push and hold F, you can look around and see a variety of switches and knobs and dials that do certain things. Flight Ready will turn on your systems and your engines. Power On will just turn on your systems. However, also in every ship, if you hit U, you turn on the systems. And then I, you turn on the engines. Now. In all these menus, you can hold F, click menu, and then change what you want them to have on them. I'm at area 18 right now, and I need these doors in front of me open, so I click comms, and then I click area 18 landing surfaces contact. It will automatically contact them for me, and they'll begin opening the doors. For takeoff, you can see here, I have this circle, which is my cursor. It's floating now different from the front of my ship because I have it set to gimbaled weapons. If you hit R one time, it locks itself to the front. If you hit R again, it stays the same, but it shows some weird dashed line. Don't worry about that for now. But if you have it set like this, where it floats, line it up perfectly with the crosshair, and then hit spacebar gingerly. That will get you off the ground without any crazy weird angles or flying or nonsense. Also be gentle about it. If you hit N, your landing gear goes up. F4 is what you use to switch between third person and first person. A lot of people switch to third person for landing and takeoff. And once you're in F4, you can push and hold Z to look around and align yourself so you can see if you're going to hit anything on your way in or out. I'm going to take off in first person though. Now that I'm in F4, I'm just going to hit W to start going forward. When you're leaving Atmo, you use the mouse wheel, mouse wheel all the way up. The mouse wheel, as you see on the left, that's your speed limiter. Your ship won't go faster or it won't go faster than the limiter. And if you hit C and the little arrow shows up, that's you telling your ship to cruise control up to that speed and stop at that speed. Right now, I have no hands on either the mouse or the keyboard. The other form of cruise control is V. V turns off the automatic acceleration or deceleration, and instead it just matches whatever speed you tell it to go to, but the mouse wheel will still work as a limiter. So if I put the limiter up to here and again let go, it'll stay. But if you have to hit V again, turn on your cruise control. This is my preferred way to play. Uh, some people just use the V feature to maintain really slow speeds while they're trying to land. Otherwise, I don't totally see the, uh, the value in it. But you might find something. It's tempting to want to leave atmosphere at roughly 90 degrees or straight up. But 
That is not advised. It's easier on your ship and your engines to leave somewhere between <clears throat> 55 and 70. Up here, you can see your altimeter. This is how high you are off the surface. And I believe it's in meters. And then this is the angle. These lines here are the angle that you hold to the surface. So you use Q and E to roll. And you can see how the angle changes. Because Q and E are, are roll, A and D are actually side thrusters. They push you straight to the sides and you allowing you to strafe while you're in space. Now the bigger the planet, the longer the altimeter will stay on your screen. And it's not until the altimeter is fully gone and the angle lines disappear that you're 100% out of atmosphere. If that number and those lines are there and you stop your engines and try to sit still, you will likely begin plummeting back towards the planet. Smaller moons, you will leave the atmosphere in as little as 10 or 5k meters. Usually on these bigger boys, it's all the way up to 100. But, oh, that one was about 80. Once you're in space, we can come all the way to a stop and then do all kinds of shenanigans. So I just hit C, and because now cruise control is off, it will slowly slow down. <clears throat> Depending on what ship you're using, it will slow down faster. But like I said, the Freelancer is a bit of a boat. Once you're slowed down, you, you can do sort of anything. You can look at your skyline which will help you set routes, and I'll get more into that in just a second, or you can look at your contracts and pick jobs that you want to do. Sometimes I do that actually as I'm leaving atmosphere because it takes a little while. When you're up here, I'm just going to play for a second with some of the other moves. So this is me strafing right and then left, and you can see this other square here that other square is the inertia of the ship. Which will determine partially what direction you're going in. So right now I'm hitting W and D. And although I'm looking forward, I am moving in that diagonal direction. Also, if you're going really fast in a direction. And then try to turn. I'm looking down now. It takes time for the direction that you're actually traveling in to drop down to actually be the direction that the nose is pointing in. Now, just a note on the Freelancer and gimbaled weapons. Gimbling is when weapons are on a mount and shoot independently of the nose of the ship. Often they work really well, but in F4, You'll see, if you look at the turrets, these ones kind of, they kind of get stuck side to side. Like that boy on the left, all jutted out. And so the gimbling works sometimes perfectly, but sometimes not. And that's just for the freelancer. But on the Freelancer, if you lock the two things together, then your weapons will generally fire this way and you have way less missed shots that way. Now, you're out in space, you wanna go someplace, you can hit F1 to open up the whole menu or F2 to go straight to your skyline. The skyline is a bit buggy. Sometimes you have to click it more than once. Sometimes you have to set routes more than once, but it's supposed to work that you double click on something and it zooms to that area, and you can zoom in and out and look at things. So if we zoom in on Arc Core here, you can see Baijani Point above Area 18, which is a space station. It won't let me click on it right now. Sometimes it will. It's, again, buggy. But if you click on something else, like let's say let's click on Arc L1 and then click Set Route, the line becomes green after I set the route, 
And now when I spool with B, in my top left of my screen, I can see the waypoint that I'm supposed to spool to. I hover over it. Once the calibration is done, you push and hold B, and you will quantum travel. Quantum traveling is how you get around the galaxy. Once, you're, once you've begun a jump, you don't actually need to sit at your pilot seat and do anything. So that's the time, again, to look at your contracts or look at your route. In the top left of the skyline, you can see how much fuel you have in your ship and how much fuel is going to be absorbed during the jump. This is really useful when you're looking at super long jumps. Like if we were going to ArcL3 or Microtech. Especially if you're doing a long day of hauling cargo or deliveries. You're going to have to be paying more attention to those numbers. And it shouldn't be a huge problem because you can refuel at pads. Also, although sometimes that is... Uh, a buggy thing that you have to deal with. Now, in the top left, I have ArcL1 selected, and you can see in the top left, it describes what the area is. So it's Lagrangian gravity well, there's a bunch of asteroids, and an R&R &R rest stop, which is where we are going to land. Now, once you come up to a place like this, sometimes it's hard to find the R&R, &R, but if you spool again, so now because I don't have a because I don't have a route selected, you can see that all of these different spool points showed up. Mining claims, other well gravity wells, planets, crusaders a planet far off. The things that are red are likely obstructed. It'll say flashing and you that's probably just means something in your way, you need to fly around. Or like in the point of this R and R, it's too close. So I can just hit B again because I can't actually warp to it. Because it's too close. Sometimes the sun is in your eyes, like it is now, and that's once again a time when if you hit B, the waypoints show up and you can so much more clearly see where everything is. As you get close to a station, it doesn't matter if it's a rest stop or a big city, you are going to have to call them from your comms menu to request landing. And they will assign you a specific place to land. It's very important that you land on that specific place or they will try and tow you away and impound your ship. If it does if that does happen it's not a huge deal, but it's annoying. All right. So we're contacting Arc L1 Wide Forest Station. And now, as we get closer, eventually a wrench will appear. It's a wrench with a little circle in it, and that's the pad that we're allowed to land it. Again, you gotta be close. There it is. So, I'm gonna turn off cruise control so I don't approach too quickly. I'm going to hit T to turn on my headlights so I can see things more clearly. I'm going to hit N to drop my landing pad right now. I'm hitting space to raise myself straight up. The landing pad I've selected not only has a wrench but also has these blue lines emanating straight from it. Now this is where the limiter is really helpful because if I bring my limiter really low, I can hit D and W and get a really refined look at what I'm doing. This is also a time when people would hit F4, make sure you stop before you do it, and then use third person to guide themselves in. When you're above the pad and level, you hit left control, and that's what takes you straight down. So an average landing. And then I to turn the engines off, you to turn the systems off. 
F4 to go back into first person, and Y gets me out of my chair. If you do need to refuel, the best place to do it is from your chair. And in your Moby Glass, you click this wrench, Vehicle Maintenance Services. And if you landed on a pad with the wrench and you're allowed to, you should be able to click, oh, refuel hydrogen, refuel quantum, click confirm, you get them. Sometimes it doesn't work and you have to land again, just take off and land again. Uh, and I, it often doesn't work when your engines are on. But that's the base guide to flying your freelancer, taking off and landing down. Just remember, the freelancer is slow to slow down. So if you're coming up on an object like an r and &R or another ship or an objective, turn off cruise control early if you're at full speed because it will take you like an easy 30 kilometers to slow all the way down. Thank you for watching and read the description if you missed something or want to see it in text.